All right, our market master of the day is with us. Aditya Narain is managing director and head of research at Edelweiss Securities. He's joining us uh, to take some questions. Aditya, uh, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, even from the last time we spoke, I think which was about a fortnight, maybe a little longer than that uh, back, uh, we've come off uh, quite a bit. Uh, how's uh, your uh, view on the market at an aggregate level evolved since, uh, given uh, the changing uh, dynamics and conditions uh, which are uh, which are which are which are changing absolutely changing your thoughts no, uh, no ab absolutely i think uh to some level the real change that you've seen since we spoke last has been on on inflation right it's just been more pervasive uh sharper and you know it's spread across countries so i think that's where uh you know the macro to some extent has taken uh, you know a dip for the negative uh, i think what has followed is a certain amount of market dislocation right the sharp uh, rate hike that you saw um, the pull down in asset classes that you've seen. So I think you've ended up seeing an underlying trend which has been weaker than expected. Uh, I think the market reaction and the policymaker reaction again has been sharper than what one expected. And so to that extent, while I think you have a little bit more cushion in the markets because they've come down, the reality is there is a certain amount of market dislocation but that keeps the risk element in the market relatively high. Mm -hmm. So I'd say at a market level, you're probably a little better off today than you were a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but at a risk level, those continue to be relatively high in spite of some of them having played through at this point in time. Okay. Uh, Aditya, good morning. Uh, is this situation similar to what we saw in March of 2020? I mean, I don't mean the triggers. The triggers are very different. That was COVID. Yeah. This, of course, is liquidity drying up. But, uh, you know, at that point in time, if you had put some money to work, it would have been the best opportunity in the next, say, 12 to 15 months. Do you think this could be a similar situation? I'd say it's a little different. You know, there there was a economic shutdown where you had no sense in terms of what the repercussions could be, right? Here, I think what you have is you have an e economic slowdown that is going to be more pronounced, but that, you know, there'll be a range, but uh, at the end of the day, it's within a certain amount of limits, right? The second, as I said, you're getting the hints of a certain amount of market dislocation, which can just from an appetite perspective, uh, uh, you know, pull you down a little bit. But in the broader scheme of things to your specific question, you know, is it something that's likely to bounce back as rapidly as it did the last time around? I would tend to be a little surprised. At the same time, you know, you saw precipitous drop the last time around. I don't think you're going to see anything of that magnitude simply because uh, there are dislocations, but, you know, they are within, within boundaries as it were or within the realms of expectations. And so I don't think you'll see the same dislocation. So I don't think it's going to go down as rapidly, just as I think it's not probably going to um, uh, bounce back uh, as aggressively as it did the last time around. Hi, Aditya. Morning. Uh, you know, on the Nifty, uh, pre-COVID levels, we were at around 12,000 odd. Today, we're still holding at close to around 15,000. You know, so we're still higher by close to around 25% or thereabouts. But on the Nifty Bank, you know, we are close to what, around seven, 800 points away from the pre-COVID levels. At that point of time, we were at around 31,500. And now we're at yeah. around uh, 32,400 or thereabouts. So we're much, uh, you know, almost at those pre-COVID levels. What do you do with these banking names? They had high FI holding. They have been getting slammed. The good part is that fundamentally things are looking up for them, whether it's on asset quality, whether it's on credit growth. Uh, your view on the banking space, wait by or this FI selling is an opportunity to get in. Yeah, so I think to some extent, I think as a relative trade, clearly they're probably the most comfortable in the space. And, you know, you spelt out the relative performance uh, of the, uh, the performances of the sector and the market, right, which actually highlights the opportunity that you get in that space. Uh, I think the good thing is there are two elements which have been actually very positive for them over this intervening period, right? The first is that they withstood the challenges of COVID pretty well. You know, you had some asset quality erosion, but nothing of the magnitude that was in part anticipated and in part could have played through. So I think that's one element. I think the second element, which is probably even more interesting, right, and which is where you need to look forward, um, is the fact that the corporate balance sheets actually are in very decent shape, right? They have not taken on the risk uh, that you would have expected to play through in an environment like this. Uh, and I think that is, is fundamentally very favorable, right? So these two, I think, augur well for the space and on a relative level, I think clearly uh, it, it makes for very uh, in, in, interesting buying, as it were. I think the third element, which I think the market is probably still debating, is the fact that rates have gone up. Now, typically what tends to happen is the early phase of 
rates going up, you tend to value up banks. The latter stage, or if they jump up very rapidly, like they have in the very recent past, you tend to get a little bit worried, right? So I think that's where there is a little bit of a debate and a certain amount of hesitancy in terms of how aggressive one can be with the sector. But if I were to step back, I think your initial uh, logic of saying that, you know, the banks have uh, fundamentally done better than the rest of the economy over the last two years, but the stocks have overreacted. Uh, and so to that extent, as a relative play, I think clearly uh, they're a comfortable place to be. In. Mm. And, you know, quite honestly, that's how we are positioning our portfolio also. Aditya, uh, you know, and this is, I think we'll have to lean on historical evidence whenever there is, uh, and there has been far and few in between this uh, synchronized tightening globally, money getting scarcer, what kind of implications does that have on, uh, on, the, on the, not the economy, not from a macro perspective, but spending, etc. I mean, uh, consumer health, uh, because, you know, we've got a, a very high inflation on our daily lives. Uh, so we all talk about discretionary demand, but uh, what we pay for most things that we use regularly is pretty much at an all-time high. And uh, there is maybe at the margin some uncertainty. The question is how much of that uncertainty will really seep in uh, and, and, and make us feel vulnerable because that has the implications for how much we are willing to go out, spend, etc. Uh, so what is, what is your perspective there, Aditya? Yeah, so if I were to sp split it between the inflation impact and the uncertainty impact, I say the inflation impact is broader uh, it is more meaningful in terms of what it does to demand. And I think that's what we need to watch out for, right? You know, we, we spoke the last time and re really our, our issue then was that demand is going to be weak over the next couple of quarters and inflation is going to be a primary reason for it. And I think that's what you really need to be careful about the, about the market with, right? I think the second element in terms of the uncertainty that it creates, uh, simply seeing rates go up, seeing markets come down, you know, that's an element which is, a, it can be very short. It can suddenly go away in two weeks' time, right? So it's not so pervasive. And the second thing is it tends to impact people like you and me and guys watching this, this channel, uh, you know, who are very influenced by the market or, or, or at the end of the day follow it closely. It does not have the same broader implications uh, that inflation has. So I think inflation is what is doing the damage. I don't think that damage will go away straight away. Uh, I think it will have implications for growth. Uh, I think it will have implications for corporate profitability and how you would value the market. Uh, but, you know, some of that has been factored in. The market has Ajit been coming off. No, Ajit the, po the point is that, uh, so it's it's both hitting at the same time. Inflation very high. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, but, uh, w which is, I mean, in everything, in, in uh, the cabs you take, uh, Uber, yeah. whatever. I mean, movies you want to go out to, restaurants you want to visit. Uh, right? I mean, just generally cost of living. Food deliveries become more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, no, the, so absolutely. but at the same yeah. time, there is something called the, the, the uh, uh, wealth effect, right? I mean, you, you may not book gains and stocks, but the fact is, if you are sitting on a lot of gains, I mean, it, uh, you, you tend to feel wealthier and you tend to be more liberal in your spending. So, yeah, go on. Yeah, well, uh, you know, just to reiterate your point, what I was probably elaborating uh, too extensively, Inflation is a bigger challenge right. than the dislocation that we are seeing, even as that dislocation adds to the inflation challenge. Okay, but if inflation were to go away and this market uncertainty were to remain, the economy would be in better shape than if inflation were to remain and uh, the uncertainty were to go away. Okay. Uh, you know, I had a specific question on uh, technology names because I was just looking at the prices. Most of these stocks, you know, say a uh, Tech Mahindra is halved now this year. Infosys, bluest of blue chip names, down 30% this year. Uh, from a longer term perspective, uh, is this perhaps a good time to be accumulating some of these names if you haven't already? Or do you think the best of the tech cycle is now behind us? See, I'd say the best of the tech valuation cycle is behind us, okay? I think the best of the growth or the demand cycle that is not behind us. Not that I'm saying it's ahead of us, but I think clearly it will be, it will sustain and it is very good, right? So I think the challenge, the, the challenge and the opportunity with tech is that the uncertainty around tech, um, uh, tech demand uh, will tend to be high. Uh, the valuations are cheaper, but not necessarily cheap, cheap. Um, uh, and in my view, I think tech demand will do much better than what the market is extrapolating at this point in time, right? So in that context, 
I would tend to believe, I think you are relatively cushioned in the tech space at this point in time, given the more recent falls. Uh, it's just that when you have uncertainty, uh, uncertainty around demand and, you know, the demand that's been factored into these businesses is, is, is a couple of years ahead. Uh, I think it'll, it'll be a little bit of a struggle for these, for these stocks to do well immediately or on the bounce. But otherwise, I generally say the business will look better than what the market is extrapolating at this point in time. And so there should be some selective picking that you should do there. Well, Aditya, as we speak, you know, the markets have moved to the low point of the day. 15,200 is here. It's come in a jiffy, actually. You thought maybe we'll, uh, you know, grind it out around 15,300 odd, but um, that's not happened. We've clearly moved lower. Um, uh, you know, Aditya, in this sort of an environment, uh, what would the pockets be that you're looking at, you know, to preserve capital? High dividend yielding companies, uh, is that a, an option out there? Or... You know, will it be some of these oil and gas names, given the kind of, uh, you know, the way the dynamics have changed globally as well? Uh, your take? Yes, yeah, so I, th I think dividends, wherever, you know, dividends are reasonably sure, I think that provides, a, you know, both the support and, and uh, you know, s some kind of upside. So I think that's one play. Uh, but the three spaces that we think we should be really uh, focusing on would be uh, in the banks, the quality banks. Uh, I think they become much, much more attractive. Uh, and we spoke on that. Uh, I think the second space is energy. I think that is a space where fundamentally you will see oil prices and mar and refining margins relatively high. Uh, and I think that should uh, you know outlast this weakness that you're seeing uh, in the economies and in the markets. Uh, and the third place, interestingly, is the two-wheeler space where we believe demand expectations have dropped off so much. Valuations have a lot of support. You have dividend yield, uh, dividend yield support. Uh, so I think that's an area that you could actually look at. So from our perspective, generally cautious in the space, uh, in, in, in the market space. But I think these are the spaces where we think uh, there is reasonable opportunity. All right. Uh, uh, thanks very much, uh, Aditya, for taking out the time uh, and uh, appreciate your thoughts here on CNBC TV 18 as always. Thanks indeed. Well, I think uh, we have a, uh, a big uh, global voice now.